Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jonah from Spotlight, and today we're going to be talking to Paul. Paul, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jonah. Thank you for asking. I'm excited to be here and be talking to people. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to call out a few things uh, first. And number one is if you don't get enough out of today's event, we're going to be doing a lot today. But Paul also has done uh, at least one other event with us. So if you head over to our YouTube channel and look up Paul, you can see another event he does. That one blew my freaking mind. What you're doing with the glass of the painting is such a wild, complex like combination of disciplines. I love it so much. But just wanted to call that out. And for everyone who's here today, please hop in the chat you're, like you're already doing, let us know where you're tuning in from, something you're excited to learn, maybe how you heard about Paul, how you heard about Spotlight. Want to call out a couple people already here. We got quite a few folks from Washington State. That is my home state, so I love seeing you all here from Pennsylvania, Central America, New Hampshire, Brazil, Massachusetts, wow. Texas, people from all over joining us, and it's such a blast to have you all here couple expectations if you got to get up away from the computer paul's moving fast through this you want to review any content don't fret all of this the presentation the whole event today will be available in a replay it'll be on youtube it'll be on the spotlight event page it'll also be emailed to you along with the course offer which we'll talk about a little later and if you have any questions today please pop them in the chat. We have set aside a dedicated Q&A after Paul's presentation where we can get to all of those questions. So if we don't answer you right away, we're not ignoring you. We'll save them and we'll get to them at the end there. And last but not least, just to make sure that everyone is in the right place. Like I said, we are talking to Paul and today we're gonna to be talking about how to create beautiful painted multi-layered glass panels. Paul is going to teach you how to use his techniques to create new and exciting glass artwork that sells at higher price points. Paul, I'm super excited to dive in and I don't want to take up any more time. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Great. Thank you, Jonah. So let me bring up my presentation here. Yep. We got you there, Paul. All right. Great. Well, what, I, what I'm going to do is just kind of give you an overview of my course and tell you everything you need to know about it. <clears throat> so Creating Dimension is actually a four course series. There's so much material, I thought it would be helpful to kind of chunk it up into four courses, but you can buy them all as a single, as a single bundle. And you can see the courses here. There's an introduction to enamels that kind of gets you started with the with the painting material. Then there, uh, course two uh, taught is the how to uh, kind of the process stuff. Course three gets into the artistry, and course four are some special topics. And I'll I'll come back to these in just a moment, give you a little more detail on what's in each of the courses. Uh, but when you when you buy the bundle, or if you were to buy the individual ones, but the discount today is for the whole bundle, um, you get full access to all four courses, and your access doesn't expire. So you can go back, rewatch these videos again and again whenever you feel the need to. You get 30 hours of video content, and I know in the glass world, uh, often tutorials are like an hour or two hours. This is 30 hours of content, which is roughly 15 hours of instruction and 15 hours of demos. So there's a lot of information there for you. There's also over 300 pages of handouts in PDF form, and those are downloadable. So you're not only getting the information visually and through your ears when you watch the video, but there are notes that go along with the entire course. And that includes uh, complete firing instructions for your kiln, material lists, and so forth. Also downloadable are the PDF project files. So if you wanted to create any of the projects in the course on your own, you can download those files and do that. And then finally, you also get access to my private Facebook group, uh, which is where I can go into more depth than I would usually go into online. 
Uh, so if you've taken my course, uh, then I am I feel very comfortable answering any question you have. You can use that group to troubleshoot if you're having an issue. You can use it to show off your new creations, uh, ask questions, get to know other artists that are uh, painting on glass. So you get all those um, in, in the course. Um, and the course is really geared for a couple things. Number one, it's geared for glass artists who want to branch out into new techniques. So if you've been doing functional plates and bowls or wall pieces and you want to do something that has a little more uh, depth to it uh, or a little more kind of substance, I should say, uh, this is for you. It's for any artist, whether they're a painter or not. And I've really tried to uh, make sure that if, if you're the kind of artist that has never picked up a paintbrush and, or you feel like, oh, I just couldn't paint, this really is for you as well. Um, I start with some very simple techniques where you don't have to pick up that, that intimidating paintbrush. And I get you going into the techniques in a way that's very, very approachable. So um, it's, it's a great way to start new techniques or to expand what you're already doing. And then if you're just a hobbyist, you just want something that's fun and exciting, it's really, uh, a, it's really a lot of fun to take uh, an image, a two-dimensional image, and turn it into a three-dimensional piece of art. Um, so a lot of people, I think, just take it to, to have something new and exciting to do. Kind of the history here is uh, I've, I've been uh, making these panels uh, for about 10, 11 years. And I began teaching in 2014 as a live workshop. Um, but of course, with COVID, a lot of things changed. And I used that time uh, last year to record my entire five-day workshop into this 30-hour video series. Um, and I set up an, a pretty elaborate recording studio with multiple cameras, uh, sound, green screen, the whole thing. It's, re I, it's really well done. Um, so you can capture, or I captured what I was doing from several camera angles. So you get to see a top view, a side view. You get to see me talking. There's a lot going on in the videos. And it's accessible to anyone in the world, which is something that wasn't possible when I was teaching live. Um, and with video, you can learn at your own pace. You're not paying travel costs, workshop fees. So it's a much more affordable way to learn these same processes. And my instructions uh, are very easy to follow and there are lots of demos. Um, so the individual courses, if you were to buy them separately, they're all uh, $99 or less, but the total package comes to $366 when purchased individually. But the bundle of the four courses together is packaged at $299 US. Uh, but with this, um, with this live event, the link um, that Joan is going to give you will give you $50 off that price. So you'll be able to buy the entire four course series for $249, which is 30% savings over the individual courses. And that discount is good for the next seven days. So that's not something you want to sit on for very long. Um, what will you learn? So here are the four courses. Number one, the enamel introduction talks about everything related to that material. So how to mix it for various applications, uh, how to apply it using various tools, how to fire it. Um, it's just everything just about painting. Even if you're just painting on a single layer of glass, you'll find this is very, very useful. Course two is the complete how-to. So it's all of the mechanical processes. So cutting the glass in the right way to get a nice uh, edge on the front of your piece, um, stacking, loading in the kiln, all, all of the information that you would want a step-by-step -step on, um, that's all covered in course two. Course three, I focus more on the artistry and the painting. 
So there are a lot more painting demos. I talk about composition. And in particular, I give you the five tips that I have found that really help to maximize the depth and dimension in my work. Uh, so that is a really super important uh, discussion. And I'll talk about finding images to paint. Uh, there's just a whole variety of things in course three. And then in course four, I cover two specialty topics. One is bubble control. I'm very proud that my pieces have almost no visible bubbles. If I'm lucky, I have no visible bubbles. And that's, that's not easy to do in layers of glass. And the other topic is something that's somewhat unique to my work. It's my fog techniques. I never used to teach the fog technique when I taught my live classes. But uh, in this video course, I, I teach you everything about how to recreate my own fog techniques. So those are the four courses. They are uh, grouped into uh, 50 different chapters. And there's 60 videos in total. So rather than give you a 30-hour video, you have it all chunked up uh, in bite-sized pieces. So the videos average about 30 minutes each. Some are a little longer or shorter. Um, but they walk you step-by-step step through everything you need to know. And if you want to go back and watch a particular demo or hear again, how do I do the bubble control, you can go exactly to those locations. And there is a PDF listing all the 50 chapter titles. Um, and so uh, Jonah is going to give you some links um, or a link to a Dropbox folder. And the list of chapter titles is in there. Uh, my presentation is in there. And then in a moment, we're going to watch a short video. And even that short video is in there. There's a link on this page. I'm not sure that's the right link. I checked my links before we started and found out they didn't work. So I gave Jonah the correct ones, and, and he'll, he'll make them available for you. I just dropped those in the chat there. So for everyone watching, they'll be in the chat and also in the description of the video. Great. Thank you so much, Jonah. So um, we are going to watch um, watch the short video now, and it basically shows you the layering process. It's 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 very short, but it will help you understand what's going on. To understand how I do this, let's look at a finished piece of mine called Misty Morning. It is nine layers, but still shows a lot of depth. I play with the layers as well as with color, translucence, and texture to enhance the sense of depth and dimension. This piece also has a fog effect added to create an ethereal quality and to give you the feeling that the trees are disappearing into the mist. To show you how this is done, I have here another version of Misty Morning, which is painted in shades of blue. Starting from the back, you can see how I've painted each individual layer. The trees get larger and darker and carry greater visual texture in the tree trunks as you move forward through the piece. When you stack them, you get a sense of what the image will look like, but it isn't until the final firing that you see the full depth and dimension. The final firing fuses the layers together, so instead of looking at nine individual layers of glass, you are looking through one thick glass panel that is over one inch thick. Okay, Jonah, let me know when we're back at the presentation. You're cruising. You're all good. All right, great. So um, a lot of people ask me how I, how I develop these techniques, and I can't claim uh, all the credit. Uh, enameling as an art form has been around for centuries. Um, so people have enameled on glass, people have enameled on copper, um, but it was only in the last few decades when we had art glass 
that people could enable on layers and then fuse them together. That's a relatively new concept. And in 2009, I took a short workshop from Mark Salisbury, who is at the Third Degree Glass Factory in St. Louis. And this workshop taught you how to enamel on glass. Uh, and I got really excited about this. It, I was looking for something new and it just sparked my interest. And I talked to Mark after the class and I said, uh, I, I told him how excited I was. I said, I really have this vision to paint color landscapes. And Mark uh, gave me two words of caution at the time. He said, number one, stay away from color because color will give you problems in the kiln. And then he also said uh, he didn't recommend painting landscapes. He didn't think landscapes would look very good in the technique. So he suggested that I look at something else to paint. So for someone who wanted to paint color landscapes, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't what I wanted to hear. Um, and I thought, you know, there's got to be a way to do this. So I went back home and I spent uh, literally two years doing trial and error. I would just make a piece, wouldn't turn out. I'd change something. I just, I had to push the envelope to get it to do what I wanted it to do. And finally, I was able to create these multi-layered panels with color, uh, and there were, there were color landscapes, and they began selling like nothing had ever sold for me before. Um, and so it really gave me hope. And uh, so since 2011, this has been what I have focused on. Uh, but this is not only for landscapes. So that's what I prefer. That's kind of what I love. But I, I sometimes deviate. And you can see here a picture that's really uh, more of graphic art. So you can paint graphic art. You can do uh, abstracts. So if you think of an abstract as a play of color and shape, now you can play in three dimensions. So you have colors and shapes and you have the layers. So there's a lot of different things you can do with abstracts as well. Uh, in my course, I teach you how to apply the enamel in a pretty traditional way using paintbrushes and sponges and palette knives. We, we go into a lot of different ways to apply the enamel on the glass. There are other ways to, to apply the enamel. These are not things I cover in the course. Uh, but uh, it opens the door to silk screening the enamel. You can um, airbrush it. You can uh, apply enamel using a color decal. And I have done a few pieces that way. Um, so really, I see my course as a stepping off point to do something that may be unique to you and will, will look unique to your style and, and your preferences as well. Um, if, if any of you are uh, new to glass, the question may come up, do I need a kiln? And yes, you are going to need a kiln at some point. Either a kiln of your own or go to a public access glass studio where they have kilns that you can rent. So basically, you would, you would prepare your piece, you would bring it into their studio and have them fire it for you. So either of those are options. If you're going to uh, get into this in a serious way, you'll probably want to consider buying a kiln or sharing a kiln with another artist. The, uh, the firing temperatures usually range between about 1100 and 1500 for my various processes. Uh, that's in Fahrenheit. Uh, in Celsius, that ranges from 600 to 800. So it's, this is not something you do in a toaster oven or in your kitchen oven. Um, you do need a kiln for these. Um, and smaller kilns will just plug into uh, household current. So in the US, that would be 110 volt. If you were to buy a really large kiln, uh, those do require like a 220 outlet, similar to what your dryer would, would use. Um, but uh, these are all very uh, easily installed, uh, even if you have to put in a separate circuit for it. And all the kiln firing schedules that you need are provided in my handouts. Uh, the other things you'll need, uh, I cover it in detail in the course, uh, but basically you'll need materials and the two 
key materials are uh, layers of glass and the enamels themselves. And I talk about uh, what glass you can use. The good news for glass artists is any fusible glass is good. So if you're using bullseye or if you're using Oceanside uh, 96 COE glass, all of that works uh, equally well. Uh, and um, then you will need some tools, fairly simple tools. None of them are expensive. Uh, a few supplies. You may want some dams because you don't want your glass turning into a puddle. So we dam the glass. We put ceramic bricks basically around it. And all of these things are available at most glass retailers. Um, I also, during COVID, began a online store to, to provide all these materials. So the enamels, the glass, all the tools, everything you need is available at CoachellaGlassWorks.com. Um, and, and so the question, why should I purchase this course? I think the main thing this course does is it allows an existing artist to elevate their work, whether it's your first movement into glass or whether you're a glass artist and you want to begin including painterly effects. It really allows you to kind of stand out from the crowd to, to have your work look unique and different. And I know when I was first working with glass and selling my work, trying to sell it at art fairs, one of the things I noticed that if I walked around the fair um, and there were several other artists, glass artists, and our work tended to look kind of similar. We we're all making plates and bowls. We're all making wall pieces. Um, and in that kind of environment, someone that wants to buy something will think seriously about the price because if you are selling something um, that's very similar to a booth uh, that's down the road and their price is cheaper than yours, unless you've got something that really stands out, they're going to go uh, to the, the cheaper item. When your work is unique, and people look at it and say, wow, I don't think I've seen something like this before. Then you can charge a higher, uh, a higher price. You don't have that price competition. People fall in love with that piece and they want to buy that piece. So, uh, so creating your own style and creating a unique look helps you in selling at a higher price point. Um, and I started selling these, um, uh, probably between three and $600 was my initial price. My, my pieces now go, um, usually my, my best range is in the two to $4,000 range. Um, and now that my pieces have gotten larger and I'm a little more well known, but uh, it's, it's not hard to recoup the cost of these videos in, in the very first sale that you have. Something I'm very proud of are the reviews that I get for my courses. Um, and most of these reviews are completely unsolicited. People just send me an email and say, I took your course and I just have to tell you how much I, I got out of it, how extensive it was, how easy it was to follow. Um, so you can, you can, uh, read these in the PDF, uh, but the course has been very, very well received and it is an excellent way to learn new techniques in your own studio and at your own pace. So, uh, just to wrap up here, uh, I've got three links for you. Coachella Glassworks EDU is my teachable site. But um, for this $50 discount, you'll want to follow the link that, um, uh, that Jonah has posted on the site. That gets you automatically that, that $50 discount. And that is good uh, until April 6th, I believe, is the uh, ending date for that. Uh, CoachellaGlassworks.com without the EDU in it. That's my retail site. And then my artist site is paulmesslink.com. So if you want to see more examples of my work, um, there's a lot of information there with, with several different portfolios for you to take a look at. So that, uh, that wraps it up. And Jonah, I'll turn things back to you now. 
Yeah, Paul, uh, thank you so much. And for everyone watching, we got Paul for a little longer, so feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat. We already got a couple there, uh, but please, we got some time left with Paul, so let's dive in. And before we start answering the questions, I just wanted to first make clear the links with the discount are in the description and pinned to the top of the comments. And also look out in the comments, there is the link for those resources Paul mentioned. Uh, but Paul, I had a couple questions about your course before we dive in. Uh, with this course, it is there is a little bit of like a entry level, it seems, as far as like the tools you need and stuff. Can you talk briefly about like what a student should have on hand before diving into the course? I know you mentioned the like a kiln and stuff, but what's the minimum amount a student needs before they can start getting value out of it? Yeah, um, the. the it, it's you know beyond the the materials the glass and the enamel it's really just some simple tools some of them are pretty obvious there's paint brushes or sponges pellet knives that you use for mixing um i like to recommend having a inexpensive digital scale for weighing the enamel it helps mm. uh come up with the right consistency and i i teach you in that first course everything you need to know about mixing um so uh a lot of these tools if you're an existing artist a lot of these tools you'll have on hand right um if you are starting off and and need the complete set i think the toolkit itself uh bundled together is about 125 dollars oh uh, nice somewhere in that area it's these are not uh not expensive tools uh probably the, if you were to buy kiln that's going to be your biggest expense um but um yeah uh you don't need you don't need a whole lot beyond that right uh well while we start we have quite a few uh pretty technical questions coming in here so i figured we might as well um hop into them but linda is asking only enamel or can glass frit and other pieces be used um, that's a great question, Linda. You can use glass frit, um, uh, but it's it's ten, it tends to be an either or because with glass frit and glass frit is just small chunks of glass in different mm. sizes. Um, if you were to use frit and then put another layer of glass over that, that's going to automatically trap a lot of air. Mm. So. Um, uh, there are ways to do it. It means you have to kind of pre-fire the individual layers to get rid of all that air. Um, there are some really wonderful artists who teach painting landscapes with frit. I've chosen to kind of focus just on the enamel side of it. Um, not that you couldn't combine it, but but my course doesn't cover frit painting. It covers just enamel painting, just to be clear. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then there were just a couple more questions on that, which was uh, Brenda was asking, can glass line paint be used? And then also Peggy was asking, does it matter what brand of enamels? Um, it ninety five percent of the time it doesn't matter which brand. Um, I I will tell you that I use um, f most often I use Fuse Master Easy Fire enamels, and those are the enamels that I sell. Um, but I also use Rogue enamels. Uh, I've used uh, Rocher. I've used Kaiser uh, and Ferro. Those are so five different brands I've used. Uh, other brands that work really well are um, Unique Glass Colors, uh, Colors for Earth, Color Line, and Glass Line. So there are a lot of them that work really well. The one I would say you may want to stay away from uh, or just avoid is um, Thompson enamels, which is a great enamel for like copper enameling, but the grain size is really it's really chunky. It's kind of like trying to mix uh, sand. Um, most uh, most of the enamels that I've mentioned are ground really, really fine, and you can mix them into a creamy consistency. So Thompson enamels gets harder to paint with, even though it's a good enamel. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and then uh, 
uh, kind of on the same subject, Beverly was asking, what type of enamels do you use? Um, so the, the one thing you want to make sure is you're getting high fire enamels. Those are enamels are, that are going to survive the heat of the kiln when we melt all the layers together. There's also low fire enamels. Um, the, there are differences between the brands. Uh, you want to stick with the high fire enamels and some brands, the bright colors will burn out a little more at high temperatures. Some are mm. pretty finicky. The reason I like the Fuse Master enamels is you don't need to venture kiln. You don't need to pre-fire to get the colors to hold. Um, so there are some brands that do work, uh, in, in my experience, better than others. Awesome. Cheers. Uh, yeah, it seems like there's also a lot of ways to do it, but you've been doing it for so long. You've just found what's the easiest to work with, right? What's the most reliable? Yes. Reliable. Yeah. Well, because I, I remember in the last event too, you were talking about just there's that stage where you throw it in the kiln and you're a little bit powerless for that period when it's actually yeah. firing, right? Yeah. Yeah. An oil painter, if they don't like how something came out, can paint over it or they, they can change things. Glass is a little unforgiving in that once it's fired, you can't go back in and change the colors. Um, so it really helps to become familiar with the material. And that's one of the things I cover a lot in both the first course and the third course mm. is the things you need to know uh, so that you have fewer surprises at the end. Right, right. Uh, and then kind of on the note of firing as well, Susan was asking, are the firing schedules for both Co 90 and 96? Cone, I believe, right? It's little cones you use? No, it's, that's actually COE. It's an abbreviation oh. for oh. coefficient of expansion. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, So different glasses expand and contract at different rates. And... So you you have to you uh, all your glass has to be the same type. You can't intermix these two types. Uh, but my firing schedules, yes, they cover both. Um, I I there is one point where I I outline the distinction between ninety and ninety six. Ninety is generally made by Bullseye, um, and ninety six by Oceanside. Um, but uh, the firing schedules are pretty identical, except for this one step where I give you different numbers based on the type of glass. So you gotcha. can use those equally well. Gotcha. And then, uh, so I'm going to just keep firing here because we got so huh? many questions. Uh, right. Richard was asking, what is needed for the cold work after the fuse? <laughs> uh, Richard, you're going to like this. Um, usually... Um, so, so I hate cold work. Cold work <laughs> is the grinding and polishing and kind right. of getting it so it's presentation ready. Uh, I don't find that uh, uh, a pleasant thing to do. And I've kind of refined my techniques in uh, course two so that uh, it, in the best case, I don't have to do any cold work at all. It comes out, I clean it, I can put it in a stand. Usually I need maybe two minutes of cleanup with a hand pad um, just to clean up a few sharp edges, but there uh, you don't need uh, to grind it. You don't need to go through any kind of extensive cold work unless you've had a problem. So hmm. if, if the piece wasn't dammed correctly and you, you, you need to repair something, then you need to get into some heavy duty cold work. But uh, I'll, I'll show you exactly how to do things so you you can avoid cold work um, in in the vast number of cases. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Paul, give us one sec here. There's a few people saying that the sound is cutting out. I'm hearing you loud and cloud uh, clear, so let's just double check there. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I got you there. Uh, everyone yeah. watching, let us know if there's still a problem there. I'm getting Paul on my hand, so it's hard to monitor, but just holler if there's still an issue. Um, but we're let's just keep going with these questions. I got you loud and clear, Paul, so I know if nothing else, we got the replay going. Great. 
Uh, Karen was asking, Paul, other than the addition of the fog technique, how does the course differ from the live class I took from you in Florida five years ago? Are the projects different? Um, there are some uh, there are some different projects, although you'll you'll recognize some of those uh, the same way. Um, but it, it's pretty much the same course put on to video. Um, of course, with 30 hours, including 15 hours of demos, there's a, there's time for a lot of demos that I didn't have time to do in the live workshop. So I would say it goes into greater depth mm. on the same materials that you were used to before. Love it. Uh, and then uh, Judith was asking specifically about the fog. Is it better to mix the fog powder with water-friendly medium or simple tap water? Um, I prefer to use medium because if you mix it with tap water, it tends to dry out really quickly, like within mm. a few minutes. And I just, I find you get a better result if you use a slower drying medium. Mm. Um, you can apply, you can take care of any, you know, coverage issues and not worry that things dry out on you. Wouldn't a tap water too might change chemically depending on where you are a little bit. I don't know if that would have an effect, but. Um, I've never heard that, but it is possible because enamels essentially are chemicals mixed with silica uh it's an oversimplification but um some of the colors that have trouble do have trouble because the chemicals when you mix colors can react that's it's an important part of the knowledge you need to know about enamels and that i cover in the course so it's possible that there could be some things in the water <laughs> right in, right yeah. uh also and then uh Another question here, a little more on fusing. Uh, do you fuse all the layers together at once or fuse each layer by itself and then fire all the layers together? So if you can talk a little more about the fusing process. Yeah, it, it's basically the latter. So every, every time I paint a layer, I put it in the kiln individually to bake on that enamel. Um, that's kind of a, a layman's term for it. I call it pre-firing. Some people call it sintering. Uh, but basically, enamel dif differs from paint in that you need heat to, to set the enamel, to burn it on. So you do every layer by itself uh, as a pre-fire. And then when everything's complete, you stack them, you surround it with the dams so it doesn't flow into a puddle. And then you heat it to a much higher temperature to fuse all those layers together. Nice. That's a trip. Ooh. Uh, and then Karen was asking, does your process retain the shapes of the images or can you anticipate some blurring of the edges because of the fusing process? Um, if you follow my process, you will not have any blurring at all. Uh, you can look at my website and I paint, I paint a lot of trees. I paint a lot of branches and I can, I can paint some amazing detail and it comes out exactly as I painted it in. And I'll teach you some things that will help that, particularly in the upper layers is where you can get some blurring. And I show you how to avoid that. So everything comes out crystal clear. Mm. Love it. Uh, well, Paul, we got through all of those questions. And if anyone has any more questions or is curious about any more aspects, where can can they reach out? Is there a good place to learn more? Um, yes, you can contact me uh, on Facebook. Send me send me a private message. Uh, my uh, my email address is paul at paulmessink.com. Um, you can send me, uh, an email with questions. I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to help with whatever you need. Awesome. And, uh, as far as just, if anyone wants to see or purchase your art, where can they do that? Uh, they can go to paulmessink.com, uh, to see it and, uh, purchasing it. I do have some work available on Artful Home. So you can go to artfulhome.com. And then my work uh, is in about a half a dozen galleries around the U.S. as well. And my galleries are also listed on the website. Or just send me an email and say, hey, I, I really like this piece. Uh, is it available? And 
and can I buy it? Love it. Love it. Well, Paul, thank you so much. It's always a blast diving into this. I think it's such a fascinating medium. I know you didn't invent it, but since our last event, I mean, I don't see hardly anyone doing exactly what you're doing in your process. So I love I love every event with you because it's just wild the dimension you're able to capture in there. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. And for everyone watching, if you had a good time today, hop in the comments. Thank Paul for his time. And please like and subscribe to the Discover YouTube channel, the Spotlight YouTube channel. Sorry, we recently changed. And we are consistently bringing folks like Paul out here to share their knowledge, help us all grow. And check out the links to the course. Once again, they're in the description and the comments. That discount is only there for a week. So take advantage of it while it's there. And... Thank you so much, Paul. It's been an absolute blast. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you, Jonah. I enjoy doing these events with you. Cheers. You as well. We'll talk soon. All right.